Hello and welcome to chapter three. Uh, chapter three is not too bad. Let's see here. It starts on page 65 in the current edition of the book. All the lights okay over there? Yes, looks like it. Um, very rainy day outside right now in Fort Worth. Actually quite lovely. Uh, we're all still inside because of the coronavirus. Now, this chapter here is called uh, learning to use regression analysis and it kind of jumps ahead of the game a little bit because we're actually talking about how to do a paper now rather than uh, sort of the technical aspects so there's gonna be things here you can't possibly do yet but I really do like the idea that he's stopping and, and mentioning all these things right now uh, kind of like uh, rather than overwhelm you with a lot of the uh, statistics and so forth like well wait a minute let's just think about what we're gonna be doing here if we were actually gonna use econometrics and he outlines uh, Studeman does uh, six rather six steps in applied regression analysis number one which is number one here review the literature review literature and uh, develop theoretical model develop theoretical model all right this takes a long time, all right? What this means is that whatever study, uh, whatever uh, topic you're trying to study, you're gonna need to go and have a look and see, well, how, how have other people uh, studied this? What is the basic background in terms of what economists believe actually determines this phenomenon? Uh, and let's see, I'm trying to make an example here. I have a paper under review right now. I'm sorry, the dog is in here and I'm now going to have to distract him. Um, paper under review at the Cambridge Journal uh, of Economics, and it is on Keynes's uh, investment function. Do I have a copy of the general theory in here? I, I might do, but anyway. Uh, so, uh, Keynes's investment function. And so I had to reread the general theory, I had to reread the section where he talks about what determines investment. I then had to read articles that uh, had, you know, also looked at the same issue. And I used something called Econ Lit, all right? Tremendous resource. Uh, to get to it, go to the library webpage. Then on the home page of the library, you'll see something that says databases. Click on that, and then it'll say, well, what subject area do you want? <laughs> well, the only subject area anyone would want, economics, of course. So you click on that, and then Econ Lit is like the first choice on there. And when you go in there, you've got a bunch of search windows like you would anywhere else. Um, I probably put in Keynes, investment, and perhaps even the word empirical to see if there were some empirical studies on it. So then you collect all these articles and you read through them. And this is a very time-consuming and absolutely necessary part of the process. I just had, I was on the uh, committee for a student uh, who was finishing up his honors paper and he had a really nice regression analysis. There was no section at all on this is what other people have done. And I was like, yeah, uh, you need to add one uh, because if you just made this up yourself, then that's not the right thing to do. You need to see what other people have done first. There's no point in reinventing the wheel, right? Uh, so this is a major part of the process. I've also seen professional articles like this, right? Uh, when I, I've reviewed a couple of articles in exchange rate literature where some joker just found some data. Hey, I'm gonna throw these in there and see if they determine the exchange rate or not. You cannot do that because econometrics isn't powerful enough to understand when correlations are mere chance and when they actually have something to do with the underlying theory. This book is gonna push theory, 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 theory. Theory comes first. Then, once you figure out the theory, then you can do the econometrics, then you can do the study. And I'll, I'll tell you this too. Uh, th there's a famous economist who has written a lot about how badly econometrics is done by economists. Her name is Deidre McCloskey. She has singled this book out as the only book that does it properly, all right? So uh, the only undergraduate book, I should say, uh, that approaches the issue properly. And she emphasizes that you have to have that background theory first. Okay, well, we'll, we'll talk about that throughout the rest of the semester. But uh, right now, what I'm saying is that your very first step in writing a paper that's gonna use econometrics is gonna be, you need to read up on the subject. If it's, if, if it's um, and there are papers on this, if it's uh, how many hours, you know, do hours of study contribute to students' grades and stuff like this. Uh, what else have I done 
uh, empirical stuff on. For years, I did exchange rate stuff, right? So I had to be very familiar with the underlying theory of what determines exchange rates. And furthermore, to see what other people had done in trying to uh, do e econometric studies. So you read and read and read, and you develop a theoretical model. All right. Uh, for example, I believe that investment is a function of interest rates, uh, expected profit, and what else could I put in there? Um, oh, 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 cost of capital. Okay, now, of course, I mean here a physical investment, not financial. And one of the things that you hear in class a great deal about investment is that, it, that, that they, an important determinant is interest rates. That the higher the interest rates are, the more expensive it is for the firm to borrow, and therefore the less they will invest. Negative sign. Because as this goes up, that goes down. Expected profit. If I'm an entrepreneur and I think that by building a new restaurant I can make a lot of money, I'm going to build more restaurants. Cost of capital. However, the more expensive it is to build a restaurant right now, the less likely I am to undertake this process. So that's just kind of like in general, these are the things I think are important, right? So that's what you come up with there. Step two, you specify the model. I'm just going to write that here. He then says in the book, um, select independent variables and functional form, all right? Uh, we haven't even gone over functional form yet, so don't worry about that. But here's the deal. This is what happens next. You're like, okay, I think that makes sense. I'd like to test this relationship. Well, guess what? Data for that do not exist, all right? We do not have data on, uh, hey, before you undertake this investment, would you mind writing down what your expected rate of profit was from that? Those data don't exist. What are we going to put in? Theoretically, it makes perfect sense to include that. But empirically, what do we end up putting in our regression analysis uh, that's going to allow us to test this, all right? Now, interest rate data, fortunately, we have tons of it. But oh my god, there's more than one interest rate. So which interest rate are we going to use uh, in, you know, we may agree that interest rates are a good idea, but which interest rates are we going to include? That, by the way, turns out to be a royal pain um, that I think I have the dog. Come, come, come. All right. Uh, this is what he wants to chase. Um, I ended up using, I think, 10-year treasury bills, something like that, um, because the, the, the feeling in the literature was that firms that are borrowing to build a factory are borrowing long-term, so you might as well look at long-term interest rates. So, but again, even if we think, oh, this makes perfect sense, we've got to figure out, yeah, but what are we going to, which variable in the real world are we going to use? We've got lots of choices. We're going to make a choice, though. Uh, you can also say, I tried three different interest rates and, and uh, repeat, you know, show all three of those. We'll do that later, but it's also okay to say, I couldn't decide. There was a good argument for all three of these. So I ran the regression three different ways. As a matter of fact, that paper that I was just mentioning in the Cambridge Journal. It's under review right now. Uh, I didn't do three different uh, variables for this, but I did do a couple of different ones for expected profit, which I had, I had to create those data. I had to take other data that existed and try to figure, okay, I think this is roughly related to what firms believed they thought they were going to uh, earn through investment. And then cost of capital. Uh, okay, here's the problem I came up against when the cost of capital. There was a pretty good variable that existed out there. Uh, the U.S. government was calculating the um, cost of industrial equipment, of, of a building, building equipment, and I thought, okay, that's basically what we need. They stopped collecting it. They stopped in, I think, 2011 now, I can't, 2012. So my, my, my uh, study goes from like 1954, and it starts then because of one of the variables I needed didn't even start till then, and then it ends when that variable ends. So that was, you know, you can look for another variable, but then that's really hard to do. So this process here of specifying the model is not simple. You don't just say, 
Well, now that I've read all the literature and I've thought about it for a long time and I've seen what other people have done, I believe investment's a function of these three things. Okay, that's great. Now I'm going to specify the model I'm going to estimate with econometrics. Yeah, well, you don't normally get to transfer these things one to one uh, so that, oh, I'll just look up the numbers for interest rate. I'll just look up the numbers for expected profit. I'll just look up the numbers for cost of capital. Very often, you're going to have huge data problems. All right, so this is uh, the next step. Let's see. What have I got next there, John? Um, oh, hypothesize the expected signs of the coefficients. That's step three. Quick step. Uh, let's see. Hypothesize signs. Um, notice I did that when I was going through on the theory part. I was stopping and saying to myself, would this be a positive impact or a negative impact? Would this be a positive impact or a negative impact? And so on. So, when you get to this stage of your econometric study, when you get down to, to step three, and, and let's make up a, a model here that you're going to estimate. Let's see here. Y is equal to beta sub zero plus beta sub one, X sub one plus beta sub two, X sub two plus beta sub three, X sub three. And, and let's just say uh, that we've come up with some sort of a number that, that that roughly corresponds to the interest rate stuff, you know, that corresponds to the expected profits, X sub two does, and X sub three to um, the uh, cost of capital. And however we ended up having to measure it, uh, we'll leave aside for now because it's not really important for this uh, particular lecture. But we've come up with an X sub one that's going to be the interest rate uh, representative of the interest rate, X sub two representative of expected profit, and X sub three representative of the cost of capital. All right. Uh, and notice I didn't put a hat on anything here. Uh, I didn't. Uh, I guess I could add this at the end. Kind of out of room there, but a stochastic error term. All right. Oh, I guess I should do this too. Sub i, sub i, sub i. So by, okay, stochastic error term. I mean this to be the sort of uh, of just very the, the true model. All right, and then we're going to try to take an estimate of it. So, uh, if you remember the true model or the theoretical model, um, that has the stochastic error term, not the residual. The residual is on the estimated equation. And right now we haven't estimated it yet. We're still just thinking about it. This is step two: specify the model. Step three: Do I expect beta sub one to be positive or negative? And clearly, I already said. I expect it to be negative. Beta sub 2, do I expect that to be positive or negative? Well, I expect that to be positive. That is, the expectation of profit goes up, firms will invest more. And I'm sorry, I guess I didn't say this. Uh, y is investment. That's what we're trying to explain here in this whole relationship. And then cost of capital, I'm expecting that one to be negative. All right, as the cost of capital go up, as, as the cost of building goes up, then they're going to invest less. Now, let's see. Step four. Collect the data. And he says inspect and clean the data. All right, here's what he means. Now you're thinking, okay, uh, and, and, and notice, here, no, notice here that these don't always, you don't completely finish this and then do this and completely finish this and then do this. And, and then after you've completely finished four, then do, I'm sorry, uh, three, then do four. Because quite honestly, in specifying the model, you will have already been looking at the data. Uh, you will have already been checking to see, can I actually get numbers on that? All right, so you kind of go back and forth. The, the general order is quite right. It does make sense. But you're not just going to jump into specifying the model until you know what kind of numbers you can actually come up with, what, what kind of data are available. I had, um, I had had the university purchase at a very low price um, a bunch of data some years ago on uh, I guess it was currency dealers' forecasts of where currencies were going to go in a week and a month. All right? So I had this great expectational data. Uh, Dr. Quinn and I wrote a paper using it, and then I wrote a bunch uh, by myself using it. Uh, and some of these papers were using these expectational data to explain uh, as an independent variable. Some of them were using the expectational data as, a, a, as the dependent variable. And then I was putting over here to the right the things that might cause those expectations. Uh, and so I happened to have some data. I already knew already I had some data that I could use. Uh, and so then I go up here in that case. I said, okay, I've got the, I already had an idea, of course. But 
uh, I had these data. It's so like, okay, well, let's, let's build some sort of a model around this. Let's look at literature that will be helpful in building a, an econometric study that could use these data. Then I'm going to specify the model, and I already know what one of the variables is going to be. It's that stuff that I got uh, from McGraw-Hill. I think McGraw-Hill was collecting it back then. Uh, and so on. So, now, he points out very nicely in the book at this step, uh, at this stage. He says, uh, I'm sorry, let me jot down the next stage so that you know why this is so important. Step five is estimate and evaluate the equation. Now in step five, you are finally doing what you're learning to do in this book, and that is run the regression, all right, and come up with the actual estimate of the equation. Now he stops here, and again, I, I really, really like this. He stops here and says, by the way, most of your time, most of your time is spent doing that. That is a very time-consuming process, going through and, and reading all these articles and trying to figure out you know, what the underlying theory ought to be, uh, specifying the model you're going you're gonna to estimate, hypothesizing the signs, collecting the data. This takes a long time. All right? Step five takes about half a second because all of a sudden you hit run on the regression and it's run. It's done. All right? So this is actually a relatively small part of the entire process. Um, I mentioned that uh, student's paper that I'd looked at before. They spent most of their time doing this. And, and I kind of know why. That, that's what was new to him. Uh, that's what he was trying to really understand. But honestly, if you're writing a professional paper, most of it is this. This takes a long time. As, fact, it, as he says in there, you'd be surprised it takes months and months. Oh my God, yes, it takes months and months. This takes a very long time, right? So then you run the regression real quick. What you don't want to do and we'll see all this kind of stuff as we build up here. We're only in chapter three, of course. What you don't want to do is play around with this until you get something that works and then make the other stuff up afterwards. That's really dishonest. Um, you can get away with it, unfortunately, because no one will know that's what you did. But what you really ought to do is start up here and come you know, down to this stage. I remember I wrote a paper on exchange rates, uh, and this was before I had all those expectational data, and it took months to create the data, uh, to write the background part. And I didn't know if I was going to get anything or not. I didn't know it was going to work, all right? Uh, and it did. Thank goodness. It, it did. It did actually work. But you could get down to step five and run it, and you're like, I got nothing. Uh, that none of the variables are significant. None of the variables are the signs I expected. Remember the R square thing? The uh, you know, adjusted R square is, is you know, 0 0.001 or whatever. Crap, I did all that work. I didn't get anything. And uh, that's the way it works, right? That's the way it is. Uh, what you, again, what you don't want to do is you come up with something that works and then back into all this. That's dishonest, right? Let's see what else we got here, John. Uh, uh, evaluate the equation. Uh, I mean, obviously, uh, uh, we would have to do that, but we really don't have enough background right now. This is a very good chapter to look back at uh, after we've, uh, again, I, I understand why he's doing it now, um, but it's really a very good chapter to look back at later once you know how to evaluate the equation and so forth. And then the last step is document the results. Um, a standard format is used to uh, present estimated regression results, and what he has is a little deal right there. He's showing all the results, which again, of course, you don't really know what those things mean yet. Uh, so I'm not going to worry about that part. But he then has a very nice example in here uh, on page 73. Uh, he goes through and shows step by step this very approach to, this was uh, Woody's Restaurant, all right? Uh, and he shows all his data and so forth. Uh, but he gives you a very specific example. That's what makes this book so good, uh, is that he really emphasizes the, the uh, practical part, the practical approach. By the way, it's Woody's Restaurant, right? And the author is A.H. Uh, Studentmund. He goes by Woody. Ah, very clever. So he made himself the example. All right. Let's see. The next thing he has in here, how much time I got? It's been 20 minutes. Uh, the next thing he has in here, and I've always wondered why he put this here uh, in this chapter, 
is he introduces dummy variables. And these are very, very useful. I, again, I don't know why it's in this chapter, but it is. So let's do that, and then that's the end of this chapter. So let's see here. Uh, and after I erase this and stop the video, I'm going to go kill the dog because he has now decided to start yipping uh, while I'm trying to tape. Um, possibly because he hears someone moving around upstairs and he wants to go upstairs and see what's going on, but it's none of his business. I'm going to stop the tape.